This is Next Radio. With Broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, and thank you, James, for training to spell my name. Uh, we should all thank James and Matt for organizing this wonderful conference. I'm having a great time. Hope you two are also having a great time. Today, I'll be talking to you about apps, as uh, James already told us, but also about youth, the core business of radio and apps, and the importance of digital storytelling. Yes, we do live amazing times, but quite awkward times and challenging times also. Mobile is just a brand new experience for everybody, and we in the broadcasting industry are trying to find the best way to deal with it. So it's even younger than so social media and social networking, which is also good because we find new stuff every day, and I get to not repeat myself in conferences, which is also interesting. So, First thing to think about, social media has already changed the way we communicate, the way we share information and news, and of course, the way we show ourselves to the world. So social media has been helping us out to build our identity. First thing of the day, what has your radio station been doing to keep up with changes occurring in society? I'll be talking to you about this app mania or app craze or whatsoever, it all started earlier this year when a client of mine just asked me one simple question. Should I have a one-stop shop app or? And I said, I don't know, I'll try to find out. So this client is Cidad FM, it's a private youth-oriented CHR format radio station, that's why I'll be talking mostly about music and entertainment, but you can find some tips for speech radio too. They were doing quite well in terms of ratings, they had very good quality content, they had interesting radio personalities, they were making their, their self present in uh, every targeted event, and they were also doing good in terms of social media. So I start thinking, what's the missing link? And that's why I focused on youth. I focused on people between 12 to 24 years old. I tried my best to combine different research methods, and so I did some desk research, finding different uh, reports from different countries to see what was happening around the world. I also did some benchmarks, and I combined it with a survey and a focus group. And from the focus group, I grabbed, I grabbed a lot of interesting information. Oh my God, you all know what this means? Right, but this is the teen's reaction to the fact that you will be one day, one single day without your smartphone. Actually, I have to confess, in some cases they use the F word, but that's kind of harsh to use in a conference, so I'm going to do, oh my God. And another thing, it's quite scary for you in the, in the business, um, none of them add um, an app, a radio app in their smartphones, which is, which is really sad. So, smartphones are totally part of teens and youth life. They are early adopters, they really rely on tech, and they use their smartphone for whatever they can and during almost every day and during a lot of time during the day. And apps drive their digital media consumption. But in terms of digital uh, media consumption, there's also another things, uh, some other things we should know. They use social networks uh, more than once a day. As a fact, they use it as long as they can. They also update their social media profile more than once a day, as long as they can, or at least once a day. They use several apps at the same time for different purposes. So they use an app for anything they want to do, depending on what they want to do. Their smartphone is always on. They use it for many things, and besides calling, because they don't call that much, they are mostly texters. They text their friends every time and, what's, and, and for anything. They also rely a lot on word of mouth and friends' advice, and besides gossiping, they really love to follow celebrities. <clears throat> but besides youth, I found three reasons why people in general use apps. Mostly because they have to find a sort of a company when there's nothing to do. So uh, apps are useful when people don't have anything to do, like commuting, for instance, and they keep themselves occupied. Because it's also hype. You know the selfie craze, everybody taking selfies, so it's kind of a 
interesting usage people do with apps, and also because it's useful. Think, for instance, on Google Maps. But teams use apps mostly to pass time. I also searched a lot of reports. I went to Google Play and App Store to find most downloaded apps of this year. And if we care to create some categories, we find that gaming, interaction, usefulness, social networking, and time spending are the most important categories in terms of app downloads. But when we combine app downloading with app usage, well, it's time to run for your life, really. Because this combination results in gaming as top download and top usage, uh, messaging apps, and visual entertainment apps. In fact, there are not a lot of people using apps. What we have is power users. And these power users use the same apps over and over again. In terms of youth, they are power users, but mostly they don't know how many apps they have on their smartphones and they surely don't know how many apps they download a month. Their answer is always, I don't know, a lot. And so their, their, um, their usage is more or less like this. Well, a friend advised me, a friend uses this so I have to have it on my smartphone. So they try it and if they don't like it, they just delete it. And why do they delete it? Because they need space on the smartphone a day, a day and day, sorry. Don't delete music or pictures. So this is my first really relevant finding. Focus on your core business and use the app to boost your digital presence and your social conversations. Do you all still remember what is radio core business? Does anyone remember? Well, I do. Radio's core business is great entertainment with amazing personalities, great songs, and also relevant information and news. Meet uh, RFM uh, morning team. They are quite crazy guys and very well known in Portugal. But the app the app core business is totally, totally different. The app core business is social conversations, visual entertainment, and music. So, as for competition, if you can't win them, just use them. Use Facebook, use Google, use Apple at your service. Put them at your service. You know what this is? Yeah, people love to talk. So have people talking about your brand and have people sharing your brand on social media. Make them talk about you, it's much easier. And as for app, I'm not into a one-size-fits-all kind of strategy. Have an app that fits your listeners' needs and that fits your partners' needs so that you can combine your brand, partners and listeners. So great, but now what? I created this sort of to-do list which, start, which starts with the uh, ta, ta da We can sing along, you know this song, don't you? Yes, it's the bright side of life. All, life. Always show the bright side of life. If you have a positive message, that will equal positive and happy listeners. And a happy listener is more likely to share your content. So besides sharing your content, you should also take some time to fuel social conversations, which means that you're not only promoting your content, you are making part of the content being intelligent, being fun, being entertaining. So have a great profile pic for presenters. Forget that they are locked in a studio. They are showing themselves to the world through social media, so a great pic makes wonders. Have an interesting storytelling. Remember what Valerie Geller told us about storytelling in radio? It's the same, but with images and video. And know your audience. Know them as deeply as you can. This way you can target better and, strat and create a strategy for each listener and talk to them as human beings. Thank you very much. This is Next Radio. Was broadcast by Onyx. Innovative solutions for creative people.